After the correct voltage supply is connected to the electric service box, the main power switch is moved to the on position at the box, and the red emergency stop button on top of the control console is checked by twisting the button slightly while gently pulling upward. You can power up the control panel. Press the power start button on the lower left of the panel while pressing the start button on the upper right of the panel at the same time. Power to the panel will be noted by the indicator lights illuminating at the various function buttons. The buttons on the motor panel control the blade motor. To turn the blade motor on, press the on button and the safety start button located at the upper right corner of the control panel at the same time. To turn the motor off, simply press the off button. If you want the motor to run in an automatic cutting sequence, starting at the beginning of the automatic cutting job and turning off at the completion of the job, press the Auto button. After the material is loaded onto the vise way, slide the vise close to the material by lifting the locking lever on the adjustable vise side and sliding the vise. The vise face plate can be moved to within one quarter inch of the material. The powered vice cylinder will close and clamp onto the material when activated. There are two panels for clamps on the EasyView console. The saw clamp panel operates the main clamp, the vice closest to the blade. The bar clamp panel operates the feed clamp, the vice located on the feed shuttle, and clamps the material while the material is indexing to the saw to be cut. The saw clamp and bar clamp have three modes of operations. The close button closes the clamp, useful when making a single or manual cut. The open button opens the clamp. The auto button sets the clamps to open and close automatically while in the automatic cutting sequence. For safety, do not put your hands in between the vices. Someone might close them, causing severe injury to your hand or fingers. Always keep your hands clear of the vices. The three shuttle buttons control three aspects of the bar feed. The FWD button moves the shuttle forward, enabling the part length to be changed at the rear of the feed table. The REV button moves the shuttle reverse to the rearmost position allowed by the shuttle stop's current position. The auto button sets the shuttle to operate automatically if the auto on button is also set to automatic. When the auto on button is pressed in the automatic panel, the shuttle and other functions move to the automatic mode on that one command. The arm button panel has three buttons. The retract button raises the arm. The cut button allows the arm to fall. And the auto button sets the arm to operate automatically during an automatic cutting sequence or job. The saw's arm height can be adjusted to different heights by moving the height stop up or down. Do not inadvertently place the upper stop collar pin below the collar rather than through one of the holes drilled through the collar. If the upper arm height is set and the pin is removed and replaced incorrectly, the upper limit switch may be activated prematurely before the blade has cleared the material. This could cause damage to the blade, the material, or the saw. For a single manual cut, clamp the material by pressing the close button on the saw clamp and or bar clamp button panel. Start the motor by pressing the on button and the second safety start button simultaneously and then press the cut button in the arm panel. When using this manual cutting technique, the motor remains on and the arm stays down when the cut is complete. To set the bar feed up for automatic operation, adjust the mechanical digital readout on the back of the bar feed for the desired length of the cuts needed. Move the part length past the desired length by .0015 inches or so and then back down to the desired part length. This removes the gear backlash for better accuracy. From the console, select the number of feeds and the number of parts that will be required for the automatic operation. Press the Auto On button to turn the automatic mode on. 
The Start with Cut button, pressed simultaneously with Safety Start button, allows a trim cut without counting this trim piece as the first part in a job quantity. Do not reach into the cutting area with your hands to retrieve the trim piece because it is not safe to do so. The Start with Feed button, pressed simultaneously with a Safety Start button, starts the automatic cutting sequence by feeding the first part forward to be cut and will continue to cycle until the program number of pieces has been cut. The Auto Off button can be pressed at any time during the cutting cycle to stop the job. When continuation of the job is desired, simply press the Auto On button, then press the Start with Feed button simultaneously with the second Safety Start button. Pressing the Auto Off button after the upper limit switch leaves the upper limit stop will allow the saw to complete the cut and then stop until the automatic cutting sequence is started again. The coolant buttons are used to control the flow of coolant to the blade and the washdown hose. Be sure to have the valve on the end of the washdown hose closed before starting the coolant system to avoid unwanted coolant flow on the floor. The on button turns the coolant pump and coolant flow on as when the washdown hose is being used. The off button turns the coolant pump and the coolant flow off. The auto button sets the coolant pump and coolant flow to come on only when the motor is running. Vice pressure is adjusted using the variable vice pressure or clamping force knob. When cutting solid materials, maximum vice pressure is recommended. When cutting thin wall material, place the material in the vise, and starting with a vice pressure very low, slowly increase the pressure until at the point before any deformation occurs. In general, it is desirable to have the maximum vice pressure holding the material while at the same time not damaging it with too much force. The Cut Watcher feature is a monitoring system designed to gauge the deflection of the blade while in a cut and report that deflection to the operator on a console display. The Cut Watcher has a feature that shuts the saw off if the light array runs all the way out one way or the other and remains illuminated for more than 20 seconds. The row of lights will remain illuminated and will flash, and the broken blade light will also illuminate. To clear the lights, press the reset button on the upper left corner of the control between the broken blade and out of stock lights. The emergency stop on the top of the control console shuts off all power to the control as well as the motor and blade. When the emergency stop on the top of the control console is pressed, the arm will fall and the control will be without power. Twist the spring-loaded emergency stop button to release it and restart the saw back up. The panic button located on the outside end of the control console will shut off the motor and stop the saw blade, but will not shut all power off to the control console. When the panic button is pressed, the broken blade light will illuminate. To clear the broken blade light, press the reset button. The cutting force knob controls how heavy the arm is when the blade is cutting. The higher the number, the heavier the blade will cut into the material. A heavy cut would be with the cutting force gauge adjusted to 7 or higher. The lower the number, the lighter the blade is. A light cut would be approximately 4.5 or 5 on the scale. The feed rate control regulates how fast the arm moves through free air and sets the maximum rate of travel. To slow down the traverse rate, turn the feed rate knob clockwise. To speed up the traverse rate, turn the feed rate knob counterclockwise. Turning the feed rate knob all the way closed to the right will prevent the arm from falling as long as there is air pressure to the saw. The air bypass valve must be opened slightly to allow air flow through the system. If the screw valve is closed and air does not pass through, operations like arm descent will be jerky. The adjustable guide arm can be moved by loosening the locking bolt, cranking the hand crank to push, or pull the adjustable guide arm to the desired position. Tighten the locking bolt back to lock the guide arm in place. In general, the guide arm should be as close to the material as possible without allowing the guide arm to make contact with it. For safety, always be sure the sliding blade guard that attaches to the adjustable guide arm is in place before operating the saw. Do not adjust the guide arm with a motor running.
To change the blade speed, turn the band motor on and rotate the blade speed handle. To increase speed, turn the handle clockwise. To decrease speed, turn the handle counterclockwise. The blade must be running before changing blade speed. Never attempt to change blade speed if the motor is not running. If you try to change blade speed while the band motor is stopped, serious damage to the motor pulley will result. Blade speed is easily and quickly controlled with an infinitely variable speed drive that lets you select the best cutting speed by simply pressing the buttons to slow or speed up the blade speed. The blade speed is shown on the LED readout. The power brush is used to help remove cutting chips from the blade. The brush should be adjusted so that the end of the wire just sweeps through the gullet between the teeth. If the brush is adjusted too close to the blade, it may cause premature dulling of the blade and will cause the wire brush to wear out quickly. The saw has manual blade tension unless the powered blade tension option is available for your saw and was ordered when your saw was purchased. To tension the blade, turn the T-handle down to within one eighth inch of the flat washer. Do not over tension the blade. For safety, never stand in front of the T-handle while turning it. If the material being cut is being cut into short pieces, a drop-in roller can be used to support the material when the material is no longer being supported by the roller on the feed table. Never attempt to run the saw in automatic with the drop-in roller in front of the feed vise, and never use it when cutting parts that are longer than 24 inches minus the width of the drop-in roller frame. Hold down fixtures aid in the clamping of multiple pieces of material in a single row. Slip the hold down fixture bracket over the vise plate extension on the fixed side of the vise until the fixture plate sits firmly on the row of parts and tighten the set screws to lock the fixture into position on the vise. There are two lockdown bolts at the pivot end of the saw. These bolts can be tightened when 90 degree cuts are going to be made. Tightening these bolts will provide more stability to the arm on a mitering pivot saw when making 90 degree cuts. They are loosened to allow the arm to swing to the desired angle when making a miter cut. In order to swing the arm over to make a miter cut, first be sure the arm is raised enough for the blade to clear the cut slot. If the 90 degree lockdown bolts are tightened, Loosen them before attempting to rotate the arm for a miter cut. Loosen the cam lock handle and rotate the arm until the pointer aligns with the desired angle on the protractor scale. Lock the cam lock lever down before cutting. If the cam lock lever is too tight to enable locking it down, or too loose to adequately lock, it can be adjusted using the Allen head bolt located in the cam lock lever mount. Always turn the motor off before moving the arm for a miter cut. Check the adjustable guide arm location. The arm may require opening to clear the material or the raised cutting discharge plate. Also take note to loosen and slide the movable vertical support on the discharge plate. If this is not moved back and the arm is rotated, the vertical support will be cut along with the material.